warning parents, we don't want you to watch your kids' online classes. We, we, don't, we, we want you to sign a contract, a document that, say, that says you won't watch us. Back again with our international correspondent, Alex Newman. Alex, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Duke. Well, I don't know. Maybe you can explain when old Rocky Top, when Tennessee decided to lose its ever-loving mind. Last week we did a story about how the governor of Tennessee was allowing the Department of Education in Tennessee to send surrogates into every single home to do health and wellness checks on the kids. The outrage, in large part to your article, was so extreme that the governor's office, the Department of, of Education, backed off. Now, as if that's not enough, the state of Tennessee is warning parents, we don't want you to watch your kids' online classes. We, we, don't, we, we want you to sign a contract, a document that, say, that says you won't watch us teach your kids. It's pretty incredible, Duke, and, and, and the, the, they seem to have it exactly backwards, right? The government in Tennessee thinks that they get to come into your home, they get to interview your children, make sure their needs are being met and that they're healthy and well and they have enough devices to keep them brainwashed and all the rest of it. But uh, when you want to see what the government is exposing your children to, so, oh, no, we, we need you to sign this uh, form here saying that no uh, outside observers are going to be watching the class. I mean, it is so asinine. And then they came out with this, oh, we, we're just trying to protect the, the privacy of other students. That's a bunch of baloney. They're trying to protect their indoctrination. And we've had a whole bunch of educators just over the last few weeks to publicly spreading about, oh, my goodness, parents are going to see us brainwashing their kids with LGBT propaganda, with race mongering, with social justice baloney, with Marxism. Uh, they're openly out there worried about even left wing parents. They're, they're saying even liberal parents, we've we got to be concerned because we're trying to disrupt and destabilize a child's homophobia and racism or whatever. Uh, this is just, it's beyond the pale. And Tennessee seems to have been chosen to be kind of a, a test state. You know, they have uh, Lamar Alexander. It's a very conservative state, but very strange things are happening there right now. Well, Lamar Alexander has been on the wrong side of every academic, every reform issue in education going back 15 years. I mean, supporter of Common Core, the, uh, the, uh, all of that stuff. Every, every aspect of it, Lamar Alexander has his gr grubby little fingers all over. So it, it may be a conservative state, and people may think, that Lamar Alexander is a conservative leg legislator, but not when it comes to uh, education. He's not. And we did a, last week we told you about how they were trying to get their surrogates into your house. The week before that, we were talking about Matthew Kay, who was one of those activists, education activists living in Philadelphia, who actually came out and wrote a series of tweets in which he was talking about how dangerous it is to let parents know what we're doing. Very concerned about what parents are going to, uh, what impact parents will have on our efforts, as you said to destabilize kids, to separate the kids from their parents with regards to the way they viewed sexuality and all the issues that the progressives care about. Basically admitted flat out, that he was African American, admitted flat out that this is really reprogramming your kids. We are going, we are programming your kids in a very different way than the parents would like, and we can't let them watch and see. Yeah, that, and that's our attitude. Uh, you know, we, 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 when last week we talked about this program to invade people's homes and talk to the children, and over and over again, a commissar of education, a commissioner of education, uh, Penny Schwinn, was saying, these are our children, right? We're, we're going to check on our children. And they have it exactly backwards. These are not the government's children, right? Hitler thought the children belonged to him. Stalin thought the children belonged to him. Mao thought the children belonged to him. Civilized, free people do not have, uh, you know, government-owned children, right? Uh, free people have families where the parents are in charge of the upbringing and the education of the children. But something big is happening in Tennessee. It's very clear. You know, once they got exposed for this thing that, you know, nobody should be allowed to watch the thing, they actually came back and they said, okay, well, you know, if you insist, we'll let you watch. But no recording, right? Absolutely no recording or, or documenting anything of what we're doing. And the reason why I think is very obvious. They're worried that some parent will record what's going on. It'll end up on YouTube. It'll become a national scandal that the poor kids are being bombarded with left-wing uh, social justice propaganda, and then they'll be in trouble. That's what they want to avoid, and that's what's going on here. Well, we talked to, even before Matthew K. even before they tried to get their families, their, their agents into your schools. We talked about Elizabeth Bartholet at Harvard University and how they want to, on the other side, of that flip flip side of that coin not only do they want to teach your kids what they're going to teach them in in opposition to what you would teach them they don't want you to even see it they're coming after homeschooling right that we're there your kids are our kids not only are we going to teach them what they want no matter what you think we're going to tell you not to pay attention we're going to send our agents to your homes and we're going to eliminate your ability to homeschool your kids because it's dangerous to children 
that's what they believe. And, and frankly, I think this attitude, this ideology is extremely dangerous. We've seen where it leads. It always produces tragedy. These totalitarians must be resisted. After the break, we're going to go a little bit more in depth. Back again with Alex Newman, our international correspondents, to continue this really important discussion about who owns your kids. Because the, in Tennessee, it's obvious that this, the Department of Education people and even the governor have acceded to the idea that Tennessee kids belong to the schools. Not to the moms and dads, not to anybody. We, we want the right to be able to infiltrate your homes if we have to. So talk a little bit more broadly, Alex. I mean, the Tennessee, Tennessee situation is horrifying. First of all, how is... How are the parents reacting to this in Tennessee, and what does this bode for the future of public education? Yeah, parents were furious, obviously. I mean, it became such a, an enormous scandal. Even the mainstream newspaper, the, the Tennessee Star that first got these documents and published them, uh, called this a, a Big Brother-style program where the government was going to come and interview all the children. So you have uh, outrage among liberals, conservatives, centrists, all of it. People are, are appalled by this. But it's part of a much broader pattern, Duke. And, you know, we, we reported last week the uh, the home invasion thing where they were going to go check on the well-being of your child. That was actually being funded by a federal grant through the Centers for Disease Control. And a lot of this is coming down from the federal level. That's why I think Tennessee is probably uh, a pilot state here. But, you know, in, in the final years of the Obama administration, the Department of Education and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services put out a, a policy document where they actually said that parents would get to be equal partners with the government in the raising of their own children, but they must submit to mandatory home visits and parenting classes and, and all these big brother programs that really makes the parents the junior partners. Yeah, we'll let you feed them. Yeah, we'll let you give them good night hugs and, and read them a story maybe, but it's subject to these terms and conditions that Big Brother has imposed. And that's the direction this is going. And interestingly, it's the same direction that totalitarian governments all throughout the 20th century have pursued. Yeah, one of the hardest things to get through to parents seven, ten, nine years ago when we were desperately fighting Common Core was the idea that this isn't just a curriculum, it's not just a pedagogy, it's not just a, a new idea. This is something that was going to funnel all of the decision-making ultimately to the federal government, right? And uh, no doubt about it, when you, you, you look at what's happened here and you see how – Common Core was really that Trojan horse that effectively did away with local control in a meaningful sense of that word, effectively did away with the rights of individual parents and individual school districts to chart their own courses. Oh, yeah, they all still pay lip service to that, right? You can do what you want. Oh, but here are the consequences if you don't do what we want you to do. You, you can do what you want. We're just not going to pay you. We're not going to fund you. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, the ESSA, I think, is a really good example of what we're talking about here. The, the Every Student Succeeds at actually, uh, Lamar Alexander, the Republican senator from Tennessee, was the, the, the main pusher of this monstrosity in the Senate. And what they did was they told parents, hey, this is going to restore local control. This is going to bring the power back to the state governments over the education system. In fact, it did exactly the opposite. When it reached Obama's desk, they couldn't believe it. They said this is a Christmas miracle. Uh, the education secretary said every element of Obama's education agenda has now been enshrined into federal law for the first time. It actually cemented Common Core in place under the guise of removing Common Core. So we're moving constantly in this direction. It's even continuing under the Trump administration. And unless we hit the brakes, we're going to wake up and find in the not too distant future that the government owns our children rather than the parents. And there is nobody, and I mean nobody, who loves children more than their parents. So even if we assume good intentions on the part of these bureaucrats, these totalitarians that want to hijack child rearing, uh, we must understand God gave children to parents for a reason. God programmed parents to love. Them. I mean, if, even if you're you know, an atheist and you just believe in biological evolution or whatever, your parents are programmed to love the child more than anybody else on the planet. So this is a dangerous idea on every front. It's part of a broader program, and it must be resisted. The ESSA, really great that you brought that up. That, that was passed in December of 2015. The year before the presidential election, you mentioned Lamar Alexander and Paul Ryan was the other group. Uh, it was Wisconsin was the big driver of this. And what they did is, rather than fight Barack Obama, they handed him before the election everything that he wanted so that no one could contest it afterwards. And what's happening under the Trump administration is what happened under the ESSA. All this was passed under Obama, thanks to the Republicans in the House and Senate. So Trump inherited this system. He hasn't fixed it. I'm not even sure Donald Trump 
would know what to look for to fix it. He's got his mind on so many other things. Really is a tragedy. Al, your final thoughts, Alex? Well, hopefully in the second uh, Trump administration term, assuming there is one, we can start tackling this monster because this thing is going to devour our families and our children and our nation if we're not careful.